Hey, Dr. Keith Curry here. As a board certified chiropractic internist and certified nutritional pathology functional medicine practitioner, I work with a lot of patients helping them preserve their health and improve their health through natural methods. What I'd like to talk about today is red blood cell health, especially when related to type two diabetes. Red blood cells are critically important for us to be healthy. I should say healthy red blood cells are critically important for us to be healthy. The red blood cells carry oxygen throughout the body to tissues such as the brain, the heart, the muscles, the organs, your fingertips, your toes. Red blood cells are what carry oxygen to those tissues. Without oxygen, tissues die. So that's, that's really important when you think about it. You can only live without oxygen for a very short period of time and have permanent nerve damage, permanent neurological damage, whether it's the brain or to the nerves, it doesn't matter. It's going to cause death of those tissues. So that's why diabetics so often will develop these neuropathies or kidney damage or lose their eyesight or develop dementia or Alzheimer's disease or strokes and heart attacks. There's so many things that are tied in with this red blood cell health aspect is because you have to have healthy red blood cells that are capable of carrying oxygen to the tissues where they need to go. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And we're going to talk about red blood cells. All right. So baby red blood cells are shaped like this. Okay. They're round. They have DNA in them. Okay. So I'll draw the DNA. Okay. Now, what happens is, is that that type of red blood cell, a baby red blood cell is called a reticulocyte. Okay. That's the medical term for a baby red blood cell. Reticulocytes, baby red blood cells, go through a maturation process to then become a mature red blood cell. And the, in that process, the baby red blood cell will cough out its DNA. And then it'll turn into this shape, which kind of looks like a figure eight on its side, okay? Or a uh, it's called bilobular or biconcave, which means that it has two lobes, bilobular, like two ear lobes, okay? So the bottom line is that mature red blood cells, like this one here, they can carry oxygen very, very well. But immature red blood cells cannot. OK, so the baby red blood cells, they just can't do what the mature red blood cells can. Now, the red blood cells, the mature red blood cells, they're called a nucleate, which means that they don't have a nucleus. They don't have DNA in there. But what they do have is what's called hemoglobin. So most diabetics are very familiar with the term hemoglobin A1C. So we're going to get to that more here in a minute. But the hemoglobin is the iron containing molecule that is inside of the red blood cells and it's specifically the hemoglobin that will bind to oxygen okay someone tried to call in here on my phone so each hemoglobin molecule can bind to four oxygens now why this is important is because oxygen can come and go all the time oxygen coming and going off of that hemoglobin molecule. And there's trillions of hemoglobin molecules in one red blood cell. So if you think that each one can bind four oxygens and there's trillions of those, that's a lot of oxygen binding in one tiny little microscopic red blood cell. Now where this becomes more interesting for me is that sugar, when it's high in the blood, okay, sugar will come over here and it will bind on the receptor on that hemoglobin where oxygen should bind. And while oxygen can come and go, sugar can't. When sugar binds to that red blood cell, where that hemoglobin binds to oxygen normally, then you don't get the oxygen coming and going. So then these mature red blood cells get into a situation where they have sugar that's all stuck to the hemoglobin in there instead of oxygen. And then oxygen doesn't get to the brain. Oxygen doesn't get to the nerves. It doesn't get to your heart. It doesn't get to your muscles and your arms and your legs. It doesn't get to your fingertips and toes. And so that's why so many diabetics will have amputations down the line is because they're 
fingertips and their toes literally rot off because they're so oxygen deprived that the tissues rot and die. And so that's what's actually going on there. It's kind of gruesome to talk about it, but somebody has to talk about this because people need to be educated on it. Now, red blood cells should live 120 days. That's the approximate lifespan of a red blood cell. But whenever a red blood cell has oxygen where it can't bind, and then sugar where its oxygen was supposed to go, and then that glycosylates and it changes the shape of the hemoglobin molecule, then that red blood cell can't carry that oxygen very well. And also the red blood cells themselves can start dying off earlier. And when that, when that happens, the red blood cell may live, you know, a hundred days, or maybe it lives 95 days instead of 120, which is what we want. Then what happens in place of this is that your red bone marrow in your, in your bones, okay, it will actually start producing more reticulocytes, baby red blood cells. And all those baby red blood cells are shaped like circles and they have DNA in them and they can't carry oxygen like the mature red blood cells can. So when you have a lot of red blood cells, baby red blood cells like that and have reticulocytosis, which is a very high number of those baby red blood cells, then that directly explains why that you're not going to feel good. You, you can't. You're not going to feel good if you have that because you have to have the mature red blood cells. So that's also a reason why hemoglobin A1C is considered a slow mover. Your blood sugar, your blood glucose, it can go up and down every 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. It's just always doing this and the body's working to help that try to stay at a, a the baseline, right? Well, what happens with A1C is A1C, you have to wait that 95, 100, 110, 120 days for the mature red blood cells that have all the sugar stuck to them. You have to wait for those to die off. And then when they die off, then these baby red blood cells can start going through their maturation process and they don't have a bunch of sugar stuck to them. So that's why someone, if they're going to work to lower A1C, they have to wait it out a month, two months, three months, four months for enough of those mature red blood cells that are overloaded with sugar to die off and then get replaced with healthier red blood cells. I hope that this makes a lot of sense. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, please give me a thumbs up. Of course, I always appreciate the comments that y'all leave for me. Um, that means a lot to me and I appreciate that dialogue. And then of course, if you like the channel, please subscribe and pass this on and share it with other patients. You're welcome to go to my website, drcurry.com, to learn more about my practice. Have a great day.